Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day, no matter where you are in the world. This will be my first video since Christmas. I took Christmas Eve and Christmas off, and I do hope that everybody out there got to spend a lot of time with their family and enjoy the holiday season. Uh, no matter where you are in this beautiful world that we live in, I hope you got to spend that important time with your family. I also want to say thank you. We're at 19,400 subscribers. We're closing in on 20,000. That is just awesome, and I want to thank you guys so much. Also, a quick reminder, you can join the channel now for just 99 cents a month. You can become an eBuzz Central member. And I do want to give you a heads up. We do have the MVP, VIP, and Pro versions that will be disappearing January 1st, 2023. And all of those perks are going to zip on over to the 99 cent member level. It's a great way to support the channel and also a great way to support content that you like. Also, I would like to send a shout out to the four newest members I have on the channel, which is William Durham. Edward Owens, Bob Curlin, and Dennis Ostergren. Thank you guys so much for believing in the channel and believing in the content enough that you wanted to back the channel with a membership. You'll never know what that means to me. Now, one thing I do love about the end of December is we usually get a lot of updates. We get a lot of updated distributions and we get a lot of kernel updates uh, in those distributions. And well, no more talking. Let me just get over to the website. And the one we're looking at today is Maybox Linux 22.12 Istrid. This is a great update for this operating system. Also, it's got some new customized tools that we're going to take a look at to really make that open box pop and really get it created and customized just the way you like it. Now, one of the things I like about Maybox is that it is based on Manjaro, but what they've done is they've weeded some of the things that exist in Manjaro that kind of make your experience not so good and they've gotten rid of them and then they've integrated some of their own tweaks and then some things from other distributions. So Maybox Linux is based on Manjaro. It features a customized open box window manager, which is pre-configured and ready for you to use. It was inspired by Crunchbang and it uses some of the Bunsen Lab utilities adapted for Manjaro. Now, these utilities are awesome. And I've covered Bunsen Labs in the past, so I know if you're a viewer of my channel, you've seen that. Maybox Linux uses some of the XFC and LXD components ingrained as well. It's got the tint tube as the default panel. And it uses JG Menu for your main menu, side panels, exit dialog, and your screenshot tools. It's really great the way they have it set up. And when you do come to their website, this is the screen you're met with. I'll be sure to link this in the description below. And it just gives you some base information. Lightweight and fast, fresh install, stable, donate, free, Maybox tools. Things that are unique to Maybox. And then the latest news. That gives you information there. And then down here, you can follow them on YouTube, Twitter, Odyssey, Facebook, Reddit, Telegram. It's got a lot of great information on their website. And then if you come up top, you've got home news, user guide, about, forum, donate, uh, and then manual, forum, blog, repository. This is one of those distributions that I think every time it gets an updated release, it just gets better. And then if you want the latest ISO, all you got to do is come up here to latest ISO. Click on that, it'll take you over here, and then right here it says packages, and then your ISO is right here. It was released just three days ago, so we're getting a nice fresh look at it, hot off the presses. So, without any further ado, let's get on over to the desktop. And it generally loads pretty quickly, but like a lot of other Linux distributions, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go in and adjust our display resolution. So let's go ahead and right click here. Let's go to settings and let's go to, uh, where's monitor? There it is right there. Let's go ahead and set that up to 1920 by 1080 and we will apply that. And we will go OK and close. And this is the desktop you get. If you download Maybox, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine. You get your conky over here. You get your little shortcut menu down here. I like this. I like to call this a cheat sheet. This makes things a lot easier if uh, you want to just stick to keyboard shortcuts. And then once you've got them figured out, you can get rid of those and not have to keep them up there if you don't want to. And you've got your tint panels up here. You've got your power, date and time, your screenshot, of course, your volume, internet, and then desktop number that you're on. You're on one there. You're on two. So we'll go ahead. And, and if you see one highlights here and two's unhighlighted, and then when you switch it back and forth, it'll go between those two. And then over here, you can drop this. You've got a nice menu here. 
or you can come over here, right click, you've got your menu here. So no matter where you are on the screen, you don't have to zip all the way back over or all the way over. You can just right click and start getting your business done. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and right click and we're going to go through this right here. You've got install Maybox, you've got terminal. And if you click on terminal, let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. And they don't. So let's see what we got top wise. Let's go ahead and make that bigger. And let's go ahead and run that up just a little bit so you can see it a little easier. And right now, with just the terminal open, uh, I have eight gigabytes issued to this virtual machine. We're using 426 megabytes with just the terminal open. That is extremely lightweight. No, you're not down to 100 or 200 like you can get with some other distributions. But with the beauty you get here, with the conky running in the background, you're only using a little over 400 megabytes. This is a lightweight distribution. And this is a distribution that if you have older hardware that you want to bring back to life, it's going to work perfect for. Or if you've got a newer machine that you wanted to just simply fly, this is definitely a distribution to take a look at. So let's go ahead and close out of the terminal. And we'll go ahead and right click back over here. You've got your browser. You've got file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And there's your file manager right there. And if we go to about, it lets you know that this is PC man file manager 1.3.2. Now, a lot like the other distros that I cover sometimes, this isn't as feature rich as let's say a, a, a dolphin or something like that, but it's plenty of power to get your work done. You got your usual suspects over here. You got your home folders right here. And like I said, it stays out of your way. Let's you get your work done and i like the overall aesthetic and look of it that's just me i will have some people that will come in the comments and go hey that looks like windows xp well some people like that look some people don't like the flashy you know everywhere look as long as it's got a good theme i can generally use it so i'm not too concerned about that so let's go ahead and close out of this let's go ahead and right click back over here you've got add and remove software how do we do that well if you guys are familiar with paymac there it is right there. Now, I do want to point something out because you do have the same issue with Maybox that you're going to have with Manjaro. And what I would do is when you go to preferences and go to third party, you do have AUR support here. You can enable this and use AUR packages on Maybox. If it were me, I would probably not do that. For the simple fact that they're basing it on Manjaro, yes, they've taken a lot of the bad things out of it but if you come over here we're on kernel i think 6.1.1 now and if you come over here they're still using the kernel 5.15.84 so you might have some issues especially if they're using older packages along with that older kernel you might have some trouble with the aur but if you give this a test drive you may want to play around with it a little bit check it out and see if you're going to have those same issues but this is pretty much where you're going to get your uh, applications that you want to install you can come over here let's do a search for like gimp let's see if it'll look it up or if it's just going to give us no see what's going to have to happen is this is going to have to refresh and because i'm using it in a virtual box you can't do that but you guys have seen me cover paymac on plenty of my previous videos so you know the power that you got here and you know exactly what you can do with it so let's go ahead and close out of that and i'm going to go ahead and right click you got your Maybox config over here you can add and remove launchers tint to panels all this different things over here that you can adjust your theme manager wallpaper colorizer we're going to look at that here in a little bit it gives you a great way to change things on here look and feel reload gtk side panels conkeys composer screen res preferred applications power open box config you've got plenty of power here what i like about this is I feel it gives me a lot of customization like KDE, but at the same time, it's lightweight and everything is pretty easy to get to and it's right here. Okay, that's the way I look at it. And then you've got your accessories. I'm not going to get too much in this because people complain to me all the time. All you do is go over applications that come pre-installed. I'm sorry, guys. It's the way I do my reviews. Uh, if you know OpenBox, you know OpenBox. If you know KDE, you know KDE. I understand that. But what if you're somebody that has never touched a Linux distribution and you find one of my videos first? All of a sudden, you're going to be able to look at it no matter what video you click on and say, okay, I know what's going on with this distribution. So I understand you're going to comment and you're going to complain that I spend too much time sometimes covering applications and the desktop itself. I apologize or shoot me. I don't care. And then you've got development, graphics, color picker, flame shot. Flame shot is a great screenshot tool. If you've never used it, 
you need to give it a shot. It's pretty simple. You just pick an area, boom, click on it, and then you have all of these options down here of what you can do. You can write on it. You can put arrows, insert boxes. So you can put an arrow up here. And then uh, let's see. Let's say we wanted to write something on it. Right there. I can't spell too good with my mouse, but I guarantee you if I had my Sense Lab pen tablet, I could probably do a whole bunch better. But you can take a screenshot, put annotations on it, uh, change text if you want to add text in a certain area. Uh, eBuzz Central. You can do everything that you need to do to a screenshot. What I'm saying is, is if you do test drive this, or maybe you're already using an, an Arch based or an Arch spin distribution. Zip on over and download FlameShot and take a look at it. It is an awesome application. And then we'll come back down here. Graphics, we already looked at. Multimedia, you got MPV Media Player, Internet, Mail Reader, Sci Radio, Settings, System, Key Binding, Screenshot, Lock Screen, Exit. Now, first thing I want to show you after we close out of that is the Conky over here. Now, what they got now is you just got to right-click on your Conky. Right-click, and it gives you... A whole bunch of different things that you can do here. You want to do a different position. You can come over here and do an alignment. Horizontal gap. Vertical back. Make movable all if you wanted to do that. Move conky to desired location. Oh, it won't work in a virtual environment. Sorry, guys. I was wondering why it wasn't moving. So that way, if you're not in virtual like me, you'll be able to move it without an issue. The reason is, is because when you move it, it's going to write... Uh, to the conky config file and save that because I'm in a virtual environment it's not going to do that so let me go back up and show you what else it can do okay let's right click back on it uh, let's go to color schemes right now you're on the default color scheme now if you wanted to come down here let's say you wanted to change it up a little bit and go to the groove box let's click on that it'll disappear for a moment and then come back up in a different color scheme or if you wanted to go back down here and go to something like uh, let's go to the dark so see, you can make it change, you can change it up and make it look exactly the way you want to. There's going to be an option in there that you like. I really like that one. Let's compare that to the default that it comes out of the box with. The default's got a little bit more green and dark to it. I think I'm going to go back to that dark. Let's just go to the SETI because it is different. But you can see right here all the power you're going to have over your conky, and it's only a right click away. All you got to do is right click it. You can change the position of it, change the color of it, and really just get it set up to the way you want. Heck, if you want to change the font, you can come over here and select a font, right? You got, I think it's on Ubuntu right now. If you wanted to go to Sans Bold, you could. Let's go over here, and it kind of shows you the way it would look with different setups and different fonts. So, I believe right now it's on Ubuntu. Let me double check. Let me close this. Right click. And the font is Ubuntu 8. So, you could change that to whatever you wanted to. And then, of course, your outline. Uh, your colors. You can come down here and pick the specific colors you want. If you would like the color schemes. If you don't, you can come down here and pick your own background colors too. Transparent background. If you wanted to make it transparent and the back bleed through, you could. But you'll have to be careful with that if you use... Uh, lighter background colors you won't be able to see the text in the numbers as well so i'm just giving you a heads up there and then of course your edit your file system info kill system colorizer conky see there's so many different things you can do so definitely check that out and then we come back up top here you've got uh, your main menu panel settings show your desktop quick way to reach files from right there uh, terminal we've already looked at web browser Install Maybox Linux, Maybox Linux Control Center. If you open that up, there is your Control Center. Let me move that here so you can see it. You've got your tent to panel, menus and side panels, auto starts, look and feel, themes, colorizer, conky, compositor system. So there's a lot of different things you can do in there. You can spend hours probably customizing this. And then if you come up here and click on that, this is your Maybox colorizer, okay? And this changes different things in the system. Uh, right here, open box theme. Let's click on that. And right here, you can see you've got your window borders. You can make those bigger, smaller. Title padding, you can do that. Title bar style. Uh, right now, we're on flat. If you wanted to go raised, you can see it changes a little bit there. You can go sunken. Then it changes a little bit also. Uh, let's go back to flat. If you want to change, uh, let's say you wanted to change the color of your title bar. Letters. There you go. 
or you can go to yellow or you can go to red green white so i mean there's so many different things you can change here you can change the gradient of the bar and the padding itself and then you've got the open box theme uh, menus and side panels you can adjust those and then of course your conky wallpaper and themes there's different themes you can go with your wallpaper if you want your wallpaper uh, and the theme of your system to coexist that means you could select a wallpaper and the, the system wide theme would change to go along with whatever color wallpaper you're using so i'm going to close out of that now you come up here to this arrow on your right you click on it it kind of gives you the same thing you get if you come over here there are a few different options uh, system and hardware, look and feel, system update, PayMac, uh, system update, command line, PayMac, renew keys, uh, and then down here, log out, suspend, reboot, hibernate. And then if you come over here, you've got your main directory, home directory. You've got wallpaper choices right here. You can choose a wallpaper, and it'll bring them up like that. Or you can go back over here, go to wallpaper, uh, wallpaper directory, generate, random wallpaper. Edit config, open wallpaper directory. Come down here, you get super alt W. That would open up your wallpaper menu there as well. So as you can see, there's plenty of different ways to customize the look of this system. And it is just a great operating system. I recommend you give it a shot. Uh, one of the producers, well, the executive producer of this channel, he actually ran it for a little while. He's an Arco Linux man. So it doesn't matter what I really show him on this channel. He's always going to go back to Arco Linux. That's his home. That's where he feels comfortable. And I don't blame him. I always tell everybody on here, find something you like. If it lets you get your job done, stick with it. Now, I do want to, on that vein and on that note, say something. I had a commenter the other day on one of my videos, the Linux BSD video, I do believe it was, that pretty much got sideways with me because I had somebody comment about them using Windows and them feeling comfortable in Windows and Mac. And I told them in the comment, I always recommend if you don't feel like you want to change or you need to change, stick with Windows or Mac. I'm still going to tell you how much of a privacy issue it is. I'm still going to tell you how much advertising gets done to you. But at the end of the day, you have to stick with what you're comfortable with. And to that commenter, like I said in the comment back to you, I recommend Linux. I show all the positives there are with Linux. I show the negatives that you might run into with Linux. But at the same time, I don't want anybody to do anything that they don't feel comfortable with. And if they feel like they can get their job done better on Mac or Windows, more power to them. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here to just say, Mac and Windows, throw it in the trash. If you've got a job and you've got to make a living and you've got to put food on your table for your family... I'm going to tell you to stick with what you're comfortable with. If you all disagree with me, please let me know about it in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, Thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.